Howdy, I'm Bob Terry, and thanks for joining us for a fantastic episode of the Western Television Show Stories of the Century, starring Jim Davis as railroad detective Matt Clark and Mary Castle as railroad detective Frankie Adams. And it's all brought to you free here on the internet by westernsontheweb.com. Come on by and see us on westernsontheweb.com for hundreds of free Western television shows and movies and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, Westerns on the Web. And we're getting our Facebook page started, so come on by and visit us on Facebook, Westerns on the Web on Facebook. Now here comes Stories of the Century. We'll see you after the show. newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Clay Allison, who fought for the South in the Great Civil War, went on to become the most feared gunman in the Southwest, one who struck such terror that no judge or jury dared try him for his crimes. The Army of the South was disbanded and the men sent home. They were allowed to keep their horses to plow the fields. Their weapons were to be turned in. There's no law that can make us surrender these pistols. That was their idea. Go back to your home and rebuild. Forget all the battles you fought. The sweat, the mud, and the rain. Clay, it sure makes Tennessee a long ride home to see Ma. We're not going to. We're better off here in Texas. You stick along with me, John. Only one kind of law for us from now on. You know, this pistol's my best friend. Best one I ever had. I don't like losing my friends. The two Allisons and their gunmen went unopposed during the reconstruction period following the war. Early morning, January the 3rd, 1875. Buying a ticket or making change? Hello, hi. Why, Frankie Adams. You sure get around. Just got in. Matt, come with you? We stopped off the army post. They're sending their own escort. Well, that's too many orders going out on the telegraph. They'd have a better chance with these army payrolls if they just let the railroad handle it. Frankie, that's safe. Oh, he can't. He doesn't know how. Uh, I'll do it. Just don't, don't shoot. Get over there. Just to make sure you don't recognize us. escort arrived in town one half hour after Frankie. Exactly the extra time that was lost having to stop at the army post. 
My name is Matt Clark. I work for the railroad as a detective. Houghton's been shot, Mass. Hold up. Where's the nurse doctor? Across the street. I'll take care of her. You get a posse together. All right, then. Get your horses. Doctor, can I see? I'll give you a minute, but that's all. I'm ready to operate. I can't afford to lose time. That is that. We'll both know when I finish. But right now, I say she has less than an even chance. Hi, Frankie. Hello, Matt. I'm so sorry about all this. If I hadn't been poking along, I'd have gotten here before that holdup. Hello, Clay. for a minute, Doc? Sorry, Clay, not now. I have a patient here, emergency. So is this one. He's out in the buckboard. I thought you might help me bring him in. Well, if it just takes a minute. I don't see anybody. Okay, Doc, let's go. We'll be needing this. But there's a patient in there. Shut up. Come on. Too good. Say, where is it, Doc? Doc Benford! Doc! That's a strange thing. Why would he leave? I don't know. He was just about to operate on Frankie. Say, there was a man came in. He was in a hurry to see the doctor. You know anybody by the name of Clay? The only Clay I know is Clay Allison. He and his brother have a ranch out here, about five miles. There's another doctor around here. Plainsburg's the closest. All right, Sheriff, get your sleeves rolled up. We've got to help Frankie. She needs it fast. I don't know much about patching up bullet wounds. I don't know either. Take a look around. See if you can find something that'll put her to sleep. Oh, here it is. Frankie said one thing before she passed out. She wounded one of those hold-up men. Could be the Allisons, all right. Had him in jail a dozen times. Never could find anyone with nerve enough to be witness. Well, I sure hope this is one of us that pulls through. It'll be the first one, Matt. But Clay Allison's done enough killing to start his own graveyard. I put just enough on there to keep her under. Take care of you, didn't I? Sit down. Oh, this ride notch got more cattle. Here it gets bigger every time I get out this way. You want to take a look? They're all wearing Allison Brand. 
Say what brought you out here, Sheriff? Not this time, Clay. This is Matt Clark, railroad detective. What's on your mind? A payroll robbery by Cimarron. A murder charge goes with it. We're looking for the holdup men. One of them was wounded. You hear that, John? Someone's been stealing payrolls. Yeah. We don't hear much news out this way. I thought maybe the doctor told you about it. Doc Binford. Matt here says you came to his office looking for him. You'll have to ask the doctor about that. He hasn't been out here. And none of your men been hurt? No. Ah! Oh, he's been hurt. Better start explaining, John. I don't know what you're trying to prove. It was last night. Hanging my gun up. Sheriff, we're taking this man back to town to clear himself. If nobody can identify him, then we've got nothing to hold him for. That sounds fair to you, Clay? Yeah, we'll go in if that's the way you want it. This man's in no condition to ride. Hook up the buckboard. It's very thoughtful of you, Sheriff. Too bad Frankie couldn't be here to identify this man. She's the girl who was shot, a railroad detective. She was unconscious. The doctor was there and ready to operate. Somehow, he just disappeared. Now, Frankie Adams is dead. got back. But Miss Adams, what happened to her? You wouldn't know, I suppose. You wouldn't know that she died when you walked away. I couldn't help it. I... I... I was hit on the back of the head. I woke up miles from here. Uh, take a look outside. We've arrested John Allison. He's been hurt, and I'm counting on you to testify. Against the Allisons? Clay is a man who came in and wanted the doctor. I know. I stepped outside with him. But I couldn't swear what happened. Then there's something else you can swear to. The law says that you've got to make out a report whenever you treat a man for a bullet wound, and that includes John Allison. I've always reported. My records are open to... Sorry. I can't help you. I know it's going to take a lot of nerve, Doctor. I'm the kind of a man who spent his whole life helping other people. I know that. I've asked around. It needs a man with courage that gives him a steady hand. One that others can put faith in. This town is your patient now, Doctor. It's a sick town with a festering growth that needs cutting away. That's what your conscience is telling you, isn't it, Doctor? All right. I'll testify. I'll do it. May 4th, 1879, John Allison was brought to trial on a charge of murder. His brother Clay, who had studied law, defended him. Will you tell us, please, doctor, in your own words, exactly what you remember of the morning when this uh, holdup was supposed to have taken place? 
The girl detective whose body was shipped back east last week in a coffin was brought to my office. She'd been badly shocked. I bandaged her the best I could. Matt Clark stepped in the room with her. The next thing I knew, I was slugged, hit from behind and knocked unconscious. I object, Your Honor. Let him tell who was in his office. I don't remember. This is perjury. He's been intimidated. You're on the road, Doctor. I am telling you. Everything I can remember. I'd like to remind Mr. Clark that it wasn't me who brought Dr. Binford up on the stand. He's your witness. And I think his reputation will qualify him to give his own testimony. The witness may proceed. <clears throat> I was taken out of town, blindfolded. The next thing I knew, I was in some kind of a shack or cabin. My blindfold was removed. And you had no idea where this was? No place I'd ever been. There were other men there, handkerchiefs masking their faces. A wounded man was lying there, his face covered. I had no idea who he might be, but it was a clean wound and I patched him up quickly. Then I was blindfolded again. And where did they release you? On a back road. I didn't know where I was. It took me a long time to reach home. Doctor, you're dismissed. <clears throat> Judge, I move that the charges against my brother be dropped. I have one more witness, Your Honor. Come on in, Frankie. Your Honor, this is Miss Frankie Adams. As you can see, she's very much alive. We'll let the whole town think she was dead for her protection, even the shipping of fake coffin. And now, Miss Adams, is the man who shot you and killed Station Agent Williams in this room? Yes. Would you please point him out to me? Sunrise, June the 26th, 1879, John Allison was about to pay for the brutal killing of Hot Williams, railroad station agent. This is a blindfold, Mr. Allison. Keep it. You can select a rifle at random. Three of these rifles have blank cartridges. The fourth is loaded with one live bullet. This is done so that the man who fires the death shot won't know it and have it on his conscience. Select your rifles. Ready. Aim. He shot him down in cold blood. He knew that three of those rifles were loaded with blanks. Didn't give him a chance. Well, that gives us enough evidence to hang both of the brothers. Yeah, and all the grub I can find. We'll ride these horses till they'll drop. We'll get fresh ones in Seven Rivers.
not a sign of them. Yeah, they've been here all right and picked up that payroll. That's one thing you can bet on. You could bet on which trail we took. Well, only two roads out of here. If you were on the run, which one would you take? I'd head for the border. Let's go. were in too much of a hurry to bother covering their trail. There was no doubt where they were headed, the Mexican border. July 4th, it's tomorrow. We ought to be in Seven Rivers by morning. This is gonna be our celebration, John. Be a lot of strangers in town. Nobody will take a second look at us. We can get some fresh horses. We'll need them. We're ever gonna reach the border. Got some pretty good saddle horses. Like to buy a couple if we can make a deal. I'm awful busy right now. Anyway, you can't rush a horse trade. Why not drop back later after the race? I'm driving my own entry. What are all these stagecoaches doing in town, Matt? It's the Fourth of July, Frankie. Big celebration. Stagecoach race, remember? Those two are going to be tough to run down if they're in town. Yeah. These horses are pretty well tuckered out. One of you men take them down and water them. You take the saloons, I'll check the stables. All right. What do you want me to do? Oh, the general store, supply houses, any place where they can buy food. Clay will never get out of here. The town's covered with deputies everywhere you turn. There's one sure way out. He's got a couple of passengers he doesn't know about. As soon as we're on the road, we take over and keep on going.
gun where you're going, Clay. I'll kill you, you little good yellow. Clay Allison died mean to the end, a killer. It was ironic for a man who lived by the gun to die of a broken back. July the 4th, 1879. Sure be glad to see the payroll. We'll drop it off. Let them know that Clay and John Ellis are dead. This is one Fourth of July I'll always remember celebrating. Well, one thing for sure, Sheriff. We've had our share of the fireworks. It's been good knowing you. you enjoyed this episode of Stories of the Century, starring Jim Davis and Mary Castle, and it's brought to you free by Wild West Toys. Please come by and shop with us at toyguntown.com, and hope you'll come on by westernsontheweb.com and see hundreds of free television shows and western movies, and there's interviews with some of your favorite western stars. Come on by and see us, www.westernsontheweb.com. I'm Bob Terry, and we hope to see you again on Down the Trail. Have a great day.